Welcome, and on today's show, I get I my get hands on a couple of lovely oris. But first, today's shot comes from Eric Dot Hachi, and this is a beautifully framed shot showing us watch and coffee machine. I must say that looks like a beast of a machine. But look what's hanging around. It's the Casio CA53W, my favorite Casio of all time. And there's nothing better in the morning than a little espresso and typing boobs on your calculator watch. <laughs> Thanks for tagging me in, my friend. It's an awesome shot. If you'd like to be on the next Casio Corner, all you gotta do, find me on Instagram Instagram here and tag me in on one of your Casio posts. Who knows? Next time, the star of the show could, could be you. you. Yes, so Swiss made loveliness. And Get your watch out. Well, today I have my Christopher Ward C65 Vintage Diver Manual Wind. It is an absolute beauty. Very thin case due to it being a manual wind. Lovely box sapphire crystal and a really big I want to twist your crown at three o'clock. What a beautiful vintage inspired full name on the dial Stana. Okay, so Oris have been around since 1904 and they are still an independent brand. Yep, that's right. They haven't been taken over by the evil Swatch group yet. It's only a matter of time. Okay. But a couple of months ago, I reviewed the very well-made Aquis, probably one of the best modern divers on the market at the moment. The reason why I haven't gone for one, it's a little bit too modern for me. I prefer reissues from brands with a great heritage and inspired by their older models. Well, today is very exciting because I have not one, but two reissues of Oris icons. <laughs> Yes, the first is the Diver 65, a vintage inspired dive watch of an Oris that came out in 1965. Definitely right up my alley. The other watch is a big crown pointer date. Now this is a reissue of a watch that was first made in 1938 and was built for pilots. Would you believe it? Both watches are extremely well designed and I know from the Aquis review, these watches are gonna be very well built. But am I gonna recommend them to you? Now, today's episode could not have been done without the help of Francis and Gay Jewelers. F&G offer a wide range of amazing watches at very competitive prices. If you sign up to the newsletter, you will receive 10% off. Also, email Ryan, tell him I sent you and you may just get treated a little differently. Are you Oris ready? Let's go. Okay, first up, the Diver 65, and this is very cool, isn't it? I'm usually a black dial type of guy, but I am very strangely attracted to this dial. This has been nicknamed the Glow Dial for obvious reasons. But straight away, the look of this watch is what I love in a diver. Really simple. Uh, oh, and what do I see? No date window. Yeah. Yes, such a beautiful, symmetrical, clean dial. And it really pops out at you, doesn't it? Stainless steel case, brushing on the tops of the lugs and polishing on the sides. A beautiful coin edge screwing crown at three o'clock with no crown guards. This is a really good looking watch. With the screw in crown and the screw in case back, this watch gives us a hundred meters. What? A hundred meters of water resistance for a diver over a thousand pounds. Mm. Oh well, moving on. Aesthetic wise, this is right up the alley. <laughs> and onto the second watch, the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date. And this is also extremely beautiful. I know it was made for pilots, but it definitely has that field watch kind of vibe. As you can see, it's another colored dial. This is like a blood red, deep sort of burgundy. One of those colored dials you would not really think about seeing it on the internet, but in person, wow, this is beautiful. My eyes go straight to that amazing pointer date hand, something very unique to this watch. But there are loads of textures on this stainless steel case just to have you admiring it for some time. I love that coin edge, coiny edge bezel. The bracelet of this I'm not too sure about, but we'll go through it a little more later. Brushing on the tops of the lugs and polishing on the sides just like the diver. An even bigger crown at three o'clock. 
It's a screw in. It's a screw down exhibition case back showing off that lovely Salita movement with a screw in crown and a screw in case back. This watch is only 50 meters of water resistance. Blooming heck, I mean, if Lorio can make a watch that has 200 meters water resistance and only costs 40 pounds, how much testing do Oris do? Or how much testing do cheaper brands actually do? Water resistance aside, first impressions, these two watches are absolutely stunning. Just a little note on the case backs and uh, oh, oh no. So yes, I want a display case back. The mineral crystal is fine and I must Oh, um, I've got to go, but thank you very much. Bye-bye. Unfortunately, my wife's gerbil, Gerald, died yesterday, and I'm doing the funeral arrangements. Mm -hmm. I've just ordered a very nice custom-made coffin. I think it'll look very nice. Oh, and very scary. I better warn the niece. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another design house where we have two case backs from an extraordinary brand called Oris. First of all, the Divers 65. Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, I can't see a display case back, but uh, seems a nice solid stainless steel, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, lovely heraldic shield, uh, the Oris uh, shield, very nice. And all the details around that screw down case back, uh, you know, obviously is very important, but uh, hmm. moving on to the Oris pointer date, I'm sure that, oh, ho, 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 ho. here we have that beautiful, iconic red rotor, and look at it shine, the lovely sapphire glass exhibition case back, oh, ho, ho, ho. something all watches should have, oh, ho, ho, ho. absolutely bewildering, isn't it, oh, ho, ho, ho. well, there you go, two orises, one Meh. The other, a beautiful exhibition case back. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you in another episode of The Design House. <laughs> Darling. Yes, dear? Our niece is on the phone. Something to do with a dead animal? Ooh. We get that sorted out. That is rubbish. Sorry about that. Quick spec check. Okay, with the diver, we got a 40 millimeter diameter case. It's 12.9 millimeters thick, just over 48 millimeters in lug tip to lug tip. And we have a very strapaholic 20 millimeter lug width. With the pointed date, we also have a 40 millimeter diameter case. It's 11.9 millimeters thick, 48 millimeters lug to lug, and another strapaholic 20 millimeter lug width. Now, both these watches would be a little bit thinner if it wasn't for the amazing box sapphire crystal protecting both dials. I mean, just look at this. The distortions are incredible and I am more than happy to have a little thicker watch if it means having those bubble beauties. Okay, now onto the bezel of the diver. It's 120 clicks, unidirectional, with an aluminium insert and loom pip at the 12 o'clock. Time to get the verdict of the World Bezeling Federation. Welcome to the World Bezeling Federation. Dedicated to finding the best bezel on a watch. Three rounds, the look, the grip, and the fidgetability. Super, let's get a bezeling. Okay, this Aris Diver 65 is an extremely attractive vintage style bezel looking watch. The grip of the bezel does look thin and the polished surface may get a bit slippy with sweaty fingers, but you can't say it's not attractive. Our referee scores, very nice. Now on to the grip, the ratchet. How much do I have to twist this before the first ratchet? And uh, oh my gosh, this bezel is moving around more than my cousin Chuck after we put a scorpion down his pants. Ugh. Referee scores. Oh, okay. And on to the fidgetability. How much do I want to twist this bezel? Morning, noon, and night. Referee scores. And the diver 65 goes on our leaderboard for two. Oh, dear. Bye-bye, bezel lovers.
Yes, this is the most depressing aspect of any watch I have ever reviewed on the channel. The movement and the back play on this bezel is not acceptable. If Casio can make a 30 pound dive watch in the Juro have a bezel with no playback, why in God's name haven't Oris done it with this watch? It doesn't only wiggle from side to side, you can actually move it up and down. It's really loose. And I have twisted two others of these and the bezel is exactly the same. Now you know I'm a bit of a connoisseur when it comes to bezel twisting and I was that close to buying one of these beauties until I twisted the bezel. Now it's not like Oris can't do bezels. The Aquis I reviewed a few months ago was very good. So with the wiggle and the playback plus the fact that the coin edge is polished just means it's not very satisfying to twist. But the ratcheting and the sound is pretty good. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Get your watch out. Okay, let's talk about what these watch heads are connected to. First of all, the pointer date. This comes with a stainless steel multi-linked bracelet. A bit of a bling blinger. A nice mixture between polished and brushed surfaces. Push pins though, for a watch over a thousand pounds. Anyway, once you have adjusted the bracelet accordingly, you won't need to touch those pins again. I do like the small clasp with the push button deployment. It's a very nice milled clasp and you get five micro adjusts, which means you definitely are gonna get a very comfortable fit. Me personally, I think I'd like this watch on a leather strap or a NATO. Having it on this bling blinger bracelet sure does make it more of a dressier watch. Now with a Diver 65, a little faux pas. Yes, a Diver with a leather strap strap. <laughs> it's very well made, lovely sign tang buckle, very supple and you can tell the quality is really good. All in all, both well made and I'm sure are going to be very comfortable. <laughs> Okay, onto the face. Dial time. Now when you're inside, the red of this point of date is very dark, almost black. But when you get some light to it, it completely changes the look. I'm actually really attracted to this color dial. I never thought I would be, but Oris do know how to make a good color dial. We got a classic railroad minute track along the outside of that dial with the date numbers on the outside of that. Then very nice looking numerals inside the track. We've got two loom squares at 12 o'clock for good orientation and triangle looms on the hours. Below the 12 we have Oris printed and below the hand stack we've got big crown and automatic. Onto the handset of this watch and I really do love this cathedral style handset. You don't really see that sort of style anywhere else. You notice that we have four hands. The second hand is a needle and not showy at all. Right at the bottom of the hand stack we have that pointer date hand. Coloured in red at the tip highlighting the date. This is such a unique feature of this watch. I think it's so cool. With the diver it's the exact opposite of busy. There is no date window to ruin the symmetry of this watch. Beautifully coloured hour markers. A type of rectangular applied marker at 12 o'clock. Good orientation. Rectangles at 3 and 9 and a slightly bigger rectangle at the 6. The actual dial looks a little bit fume coloured doesn't it? Sunburst from bright to dark. It's a grey colour but it sure doesn't half make those applied indices pop. Oh, those markers are framed in silver and we have a very simple minute track going along the outside of the dial. Below the 12 again we have Oris printed and then below the hand stack we have water resistant 10 bar stroke 100 meters. The handset well they're very simple aren't they? Unfortunately for me it was noted by a couple of subscribers that the hour hand looked a little bit like one of these. Once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. It's a bit like the Seiko dive watches with the 12 market that looks like a pair of underpants. Or the meat and two veg at the 12 o'clock on an Amiga Speedmaster. That being said, I think I do prefer the diver's dial and handset to the pointer date. I'm all about very simple, legible dials, but that pointer date hand is very cool. <laughs> Okay, with the diver, we've got loom on the indices, loom on the handset, and loom at the pip on the bezel. Let's see how this puppy glows. Yeah, unfortunately, the watch glows better in the daylight than it does in the nighttime. Why the applied indices couldn't have had the same treatment as the handset and the loom pip, I'll never know. 
With this one, we've got Loom on the handset, Loom on the numerals, and Loom pips for the hours. Let's see how this glows. Again, not brilliant, it not being a diver. I can let it off a bit more, but still, not the best loom we've seen, is it? Powering both of these beauties is a Salita SW200-1. It's a clone of the ETA2824. It's got 26 joules, has 38 hours of power reserve, and has a smooth sweep of 28,800 beats per hour. But when you buy one of these beauties, how well do they run? Welcome everybody, and as you can see, this Salita SW200 is running pretty well. The engine has tolerances between minus and plus 12 seconds a day. It's a little bit higher, plus 8 seconds, but a healthy amplitude of 273 and a beat error of just 0 0.2 milliseconds. A very reliable movement, and I'm happy with those results. That's it from me, and remember, if something can't be timed, spoon it. Bye! To operate these watches is rather enjoyable. First of all, let's start with the diver. Lovely unscrew pop you get, and I do like a Salita wind. You definitely feel like you're putting power into the watch. There is no date complication, nor is there a ghost date position. So it's just one pull out, and we can change the time, plus we have hacking. On the pointed date, unscrewing the crown, we get another nice pop. It's another good wind. Pop it out to the first position, and we get to change that lovely pointer date hand. Great feeling as the cogs inside are moving to turn that day. I really do like that. Anyway, pull it out to the last position. We have hacking again and we can change the time. The crowns are so nice and chunky. What a very satisfying experience. Hello. On my six and a half inch wrist and the diver looks incredible, doesn't it? It's a 40 millimeter case and with 47 millimeters lag to lug, this is almost right in my sweet spot. It's got a great flat profile and it's a watch I can definitely see my Myself owning possibly further down the line you know when they've sorted out the bezel the pointed date looks a little bit bigger I think because you don't have a lot of bezel you get a lot of dial with a similar lug to lug measurement it still wears very well like I said I'm not sure I would buy this watch with this bracelet I'd love a lovely tan leather strap or a NATO giving it more of a fieldy pilot's watch type of vibe but I think it's a stunning watch here are both watches outside for you both watches are definitely showers aren't they and it just highlights how well Oris really does with their dial colors. <laughs> Give us the positives on the diver. Well, looks-wise, it's perfect for me. Perfect in looks and wears on my wrist beautifully. I love the symmetry of the dial. I love that box sapphire crystal just showing the distortions. The color of this dial with the glowy blue indices really does look good in the daylight. And I'd be very proud to wear this watch. Give us the negatives. Worst bezel. If they fix the looseness of that bezel, they've got a ratchet in there that could make it one of the best bezels of all time. Elephant in the room, of course, course, a dive watch over a thousand pounds that only has a hundred meters of water resistance. Now you and me are not going to go underwater 10 meters, let alone a hundred. But if watches half the price of this can successfully be pressure tested to over 200 meters of water resistance, 20 at loss, what do Oris need to do to make this watch be the same? It would be interesting to find out. Give us the positives on the pointer date. The dial is very unique. It's beautiful. I didn't think I like this colored dial but I really do. The pointed date complication is so unique it's the first time I've ever encountered it. I love the railroad track it reminds me of a British Armed Forces watch back in the 30s and 40s. The coin edge on that bezel really does add to the texture and I love it and again that box sapphire dome crystal is a stunner. Give us the negatives. Screw down crown, screw down case back, 50 meters of water resistance. Again Oris come on look around you. If a micro came out with a watch with a screw down crown and a screw down case back and only told you it was 50 meters of water resistance you would laugh them in the face <laughs> I'm not a massive fan of the bracelet just my personal preference but for well over the thousand pound mark I'd expect those links to be screw in and not pins here it is my wife's first impressions of the big crown pointer date I instantly hate the bracelet too much silver too much metal going on. I do like the, what is it, railroad track? 
And now for the Divers 65. I really don't like the colour combination this one. Saying that, it might grow on me. I really don't like the strap either. Okay, to buy the Diver brand new, the cost is £1,400. To buy the pointer date, it's going to cost you £1,350. Independent Swiss company, amazing build quality, great Swiss movement inside. I think it's good value. Get your watch out. I'd love to know your thoughts of these two watches. Which is your favourite, the Diver? or the pointer. If you're looking to buy a watch just over the thousand pound mark, I don't think you can go very wrong with Oris. They are a luxury brand, but an affordable one. Ish. I said ish. From me, the Mad Watch Collector, I'll see you in a tick, 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 a tick.